Welcome everyone uh, to the uh, sort of welcome lecture from S.Y. Qureshi to the Comparing Elections and Electoral Systems in North America and India conference. My name is Richard Johnston. Uh, by a vote of three to one, I was chosen as the uh, person to do the introductions. I was not present uh, at the time the vote was taken, but I'm actually very pleased to be asked to do this. Uh, just so you know, my current affiliation is the University of BC, but I I'm a former Penn person, and it doesn't feel very former at the moment, I must say, which is very pleasant. Anyway, my task is not to talk about me, but to introduce S.Y. Qureshi, the Chief Commissioner for Elections for India. Um, I, I can't underscore how big a deal it is for us to have Mr. Qureshi here. The uh, position is recognized in the Constitution of India. It is an enormously important role. This is the largest election task in the world. Uh, not only does the uh, Elections Commission uh, take care of the parliamentary elections, lots of elections, but also presidential and vice presidential, and elections in, in several <coughs> states. Uh, so uh, Mr. Qureshi is responsible for organization of election on a, to, certainly to a Canadian, is an unimaginable scale. Um, he's the 17th Chief Commissioner. He has been so since 30th of July, I believe, of last year, and served on the Commission for four years before that. But before that, had a 35-year civil service history that was incredibly impressive. His last uh, pre-election commission position was as secretary in the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports. We were actually just talking about the fact that the, um, the uh, advent of the Commonwealth Games, a rather contested proposition last year, was already troubling him. Maybe, that's, maybe that helped him move over to the election commission in 2006, but, uh, but that's a big deal. Um, I, be interested to see whether he is pleased not to be involved with the Ministry for Sport now that the Cricket World Cup is taking place in India. Uh, I can tell you that in our household, once Canada is dismissed, we'll be barricaded in India. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we know what's good for us. Anyway, uh, before Youth and, and uh, Youth Affairs and Sport, he was uh, Secretary in, uh, uh, or the Special Secretary for Health, uh, the Director General of the National AIDS Control Organization. Uh, earlier than that, De Director General of National TV, um, and uh, with the Rural Youth Development Agency. Um, also has been a senior public servant in the state of Haryana. Um, the themes that run through his career before election commission uh, are gender, families, youth and adolescents, HIV, AIDS. So big social issues. Even before becoming a public servant, or actually I suppose somewhat overlapping, there's a scholarly story here, it's a PhD. Indeed, I don't know whether there's anybody from Annenberg here just now, but social marketing, social communications is the theme of, of the academic side. So we have here a man of parts, to say the least. Uh, and uh, without further ado, I'm going to give you this like Gracie. The, just, there is one bit of further ado. Talk will be about 40 minutes, and then it's wide open for Q&A. We'll sort of run it from the table. Mr. Price. Thank you, Chair and uh, ladies and gentlemen. My last posting before Election Commission, as you said, was Secretary Sports. And field sports and other sports, as uh, you know, we also had adventure sports. But we didn't have uh, violent sports as we have in the Election Commission. <laughs> we. Uh, there is uh, a, this suggestion which is thrown uh, occasionally that in India we say fighting elections and people live up to this expectation and they literally fight. <laughs> so whether we can use the term uh, let's uh, play elections or something of that kind. Uh, anyway, uh, we as a civil servant and I have a, a colleague of mine from uh, Indian Administrative Service, we uh, keep moving from one department to the other which uh, baffles many people outside because they think uh, it doesn't give us any expertise. But we would like to believe that we are also experts of uh, management. We have public administrators, and whether it is agriculture or industry or uh, sports, whichever department, management issues are the same. Therefore, uh, besides, instead of becoming a problem, it actually gives us a variety of experience. We never go, uh, we never go stale, we never get bored. And we are always learning, because in a new job where you are a stranger, you have to learn to make your presence felt. 
However, when I came to the election commission, the, it is a, almost a natural progression because all of us civil servants have conducted elections in various capacities all our lives. But um, I had the additional uh, advantage of being uh, a presiding officer of a single booth when I was under training. My trainer, DC, uh, there were four of us in the batch in the state of Haryana. All of them are given, the, because we are senior officers from day one, so we are given uh, supervisory jobs. But he forced me to be the uh, poly, uh, presiding officer of a booth. I was very upset, I was very angry with him. Uh, but he, uh, he understood my uh, displeasure and he uh, explained to me how it will come in handy. Some, an experience which I'll never have otherwise. And there were comforting thoughts also going around that there was a story of a presiding officer. It's a very responsible job, the presiding officer of a booth. And we have about a million of them. So the, the inventory of a presiding officer has about 170 items. And each one has to be present because if something is missing, even a pin is missing a, or a seal is missing, uh, so there will be a problem. And there was the story of a presiding officer who forgot to uh, bring his uh, stamp when he came back and when he deposited his, his kit. And uh, the scare is so much, the fright is so much, he literally ran 12 miles to go and retrieve the stamp and he came back. With that comforting thought where, when I was given this job of presiding officer, and that's an experience I can never forget. And when I was appointed uh, the chief election, election commissioner of India in June, I looked at a further gentleman who was my trainer collector and located him, he's living a retired life, located him, thanked him for his foresight. He was of course very touched, very happy, uh, just as I was. And that was the beginning of my uh, term in the election commission. It's uh, uh, quite a huge task as you, you will see. Uh, we had the... Uh, Largest is the title given, the largest uh, the, uh, the diversity of the country which we deal with. Uh, we became uh, uh, a republic in 1950, and 51-52 uh, was the first general election. Incidentally, Election Commission of India was born a day before India was born as a republic, because the constitution framers uh, were very the particular about the, uh, the importance of the, the institution of elections in a democracy and uh, the kind of power they gave to the election commission, the independence uh, and distance which they created between the election commission and the government has really come in the very handy. We the, uh, got um, we, uh, equal voting rights, men and women, at, at that time it was 21 years all in one stroke. Whereas in the United States it took 131 years for women to get uh, enfranchised. Even in the mother of democracy, UK, it took 100 years. And other countries also have taken decades, if not uh, around a century. But at that time when India became uh, a republic and a democracy, if people frowned upon this adventure. They thought this is a, a great adventure with a country with 84% uh, illiteracy, how will they cope uh, with the uh, responsibility of democracy? And it uh, will fail. But history has proved otherwise. I want to give you these figures. Caste-based hierarchical structure, this is one of the diversities. I, I don't know how uh, how to explain uh, the caste system uh, to those who are not familiar with it, but for India, it's a part of our uh, uh, total uh, socio-cultural life. There are uh, caste uh, levels of society, and there are upper caste and the lower caste, and then the sub-caste, and they, they work uh, almost in a clannish manner. Uh, and election system, uh, is, uh, unfortunately, is uh, perpetuating the, those divisions on the caste line. And managing those uh, divisions also is one of our problems. We have conducted 15 general elections to uh, the federal parliament and more than 300, to be exact, about 328 elections to the state assemblies. There are 35 states in the country. 
and uh, uh, states and union territories, to be very technically correct. Then uh, uh, we have three million elected representatives of various levels, uh, local, rural, uh, uh, communities, and municipal, and uh, uh, onward. We don't really deal with the local body elections, only state assembly, 35 state assembly, two houses, parliament, both houses, vice president and president. We have in the, never missed a deadline, not even by a day. Every election is held on time and uh, with credibility. And the, with the result that the change of power has always been very smooth and very cordial. In fact, after the last general election, uh, Mr. Obama uh, did comment on India as a historic election and as an example for all of us. In the Constitution, the preamble itself uh, talks of uh, India being a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. And uh, there are uh, provisions for safeguards of minorities. Uh, we, all these words are important because then to implement this uh, uh, preamble, the, the various provisions of the Constitution and the acts have been provided. Minorities uh, are religious, uh, linguistic. They have been provided uh, secure, uh, all kinds of uh, provisions. Now there are tribes, there is, there is, you will come across this term scheduled tribe and scheduled caste. These are scheduled in the constitution of India, listing certain uh, tribes specifically and certain castes uh, and they have been given some reservation but uh, there is 15% reservation of seats uh, and even an employment for uh, those belonging to the scheduled caste. Some of the, you know, you may be familiar with the word untouchables, that was uh, the term used for some of these classes and the 7.5% uh, reservation for scheduled tribes. Some of the, uh, the these tribes really live in the, the primitive ages. Then we also had provision for Anglo-Indians and the geographical diversity itself. We have an area, any time of the year, minus 40 degrees uh, Celsius. So how much will it be in Fahrenheit? Minus 40 degrees Celsius and there are areas which uh, in summer which will have 58 degrees plus. Uh, Celsius. So, huge uh, rain and we, uh, we have to uh, have a system with, in spite of uh, these uh, diversities, we, uh, we deliver. Huge uh, area already mentioned. We have mountains, plains, deserts, forests, islands, coastline and of course the different seasons. The population of India is uh, now about 1.2 billion. Uh, of which 28% uh, is urban. And uh, even in the, the context of election management, we find lots of difference in the managing the election in these two uh, specific areas. For instance, in urban areas, there is uh, voter apathy. They don't turn out big numbers. Even the house numbers are uh, erratic. Look, look, you know, even we have problems in doing our electoral roll. Uh, Mr. Chair, would you like to move to that chair? Because it's okay? <laughs> then major religions, Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Christians, Jains, Buddhists, Parsis. We have 18 official languages and thousands of dialects. But 18 official languages is something we have to deal with because our electoral roles have to be in the local language besides English and Hindi. Uh, and in many places they have to be in three languages. Even on the, the ballot paper, which is, uh, we have to print it in three languages. There are uh, two, uh, particularly the pluralistic society, in fact, we are very proud of our pluralism. Everybody is uh, equal, uh, they're all on board. Uh, there are the, our laws are very protective of uh, the pluralistic structure of our society. We, uh, the, uh, in, in the context of election, there cannot be any appeal on grounds of religion, caste, creed, community, or language. Uh, I've mentioned a section for those of you who may be interested in the electoral laws of India. Then uh, you can't promote uh, feelings of hatred, ill will, or enmity between different classes. You can't use religious institutions for electioneering. Uh, there is a um, punishment for interference with electoral rights of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. So, uh, suppose these lower castes are prevented from uh, coming out and voting. There are severe uh, uh, penal provisions in the Act. And the MCC, the Model Code of Conduct, this is uh, one term I would like you to, uh, to take note of. This is a unique instrument that we have, a code developed by the political parties themselves 
and it votes so strictly, so vigorously that it keeps uh, the election uh, system free from uh, uh, animosity, rivalries, uh, fist fights. It can keep the campaign very healthy. I have mentioned about some reservation for SC, the next scheduled task, scheduled drive. Corrupt practices are punishable, uh, bribery or uh, the division on the basis of caste. Uh, undue influence by using official machinery. A threat inducement. See, again, this, this bullet also, you know, please take note of. This is uh, uh, one uh, more area which gives us a lot of power. Virtually, because of this, we almost, people say that we take over the government. The, even the federal cabinet cannot even pass a resolution, cannot even put up a resolution in the cabinet because that uh, resolution may carry some inducement to the voters, some announcement of a new scheme. And uh, since it cannot be kept secret, it will leak out, they will get the political advantage. So this is the uh, undue uh, 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 use of uh, official machinery, threat, inducement, all these things we come down heavily on uh, any abuse of authority or power by the uh, ruling party, which is why uh, uh, my own experience is that ruling party always hates us, opposition parties love us, when the role reverse, of course, then they, their attitude also changes accordingly. Now, uh, since we are a totally the, uh, inclusive society, we make provisions, uh, although we, are, we have equality, but then a positive discrimination is uh, accepted in the constitution, it is incorrect. For women, we have separate queues at polling stations. Some, uh, in some areas where the uh, status of women is considered a little uh, sensitive to these issues, we even have separate polling stations for women. And uh, we were both um, uh, women officers at the uh, spelling mistake there, forgive me, uh, women officers at the polling stations for, so that, you know, there are women who wear burqa, veil, so they have to be identified, so only a woman can see, so therefore a woman is posted, and we even use the uh, women police. For the disabled, every single uh, polling booth, which we have about 832,000 on the last count, it will go up by 100,000 in the next two years. Uh, it has a ramp for the disabled. And uh, every single machine, we have 1.2 million, has a braille system. Even if the uh, braille literate blind can be very, very few, but the facility is there. And uh, we have allow a companion for the infirm and the disabled. Now, we, the, the ballot paper has, uh, beside the name of the candidates, also has symbols. This is to cater to the illiterate population so that they recognize the symbol and uh, can they can press the button. Mm. Then uh, I have already mentioned about uh, using different languages for a role. Incidentally, we recently we gave uh, transgenders the that they already had the right to vote, but there was a technical problem that when they our enumerators went to them and asked for the caste. For, sorry, for the gender, if, if he or she says a woman and sounds like a man, so not accepted, vice versa. So this demand came to us and we took exactly 30 seconds to decide that one million transgenders cannot be excluded from the polling process. And we said, all right, they will be called other gender, O, um, male, female and O was introduced. And it was received a great appreciation in the countrywide. Now that a new census is taking place, they have adopted this also from us because we cannot keep one million people out of uh, democratic process. We have now recently also given the voting rights to non-resident Indians, those who still have Indian passport. Uh, but since you are, some of you are unarrived, let me make it clear. Uh, it is on an experimental basis. You have to register. You have to register yourself at the place uh, your permanent address on your passport, and you have to be physically present there to vote. You get no postal ballot, please, for you. <laughs> In the large, how large is the largest? Every you know, you will hear the largest, largest, large. A can be larger than B. In this case, A is larger than B to Z, and double B to double Z. As, as I will uh, in the next slide I will tell you, we uh, have about uh, 832,000 polling stations, 1.2 million machines. In the last general election, we used 11 million people 
for us to work and conduct the election because the uh, constitution gives us power to call upon anybody to do election duty and uh, if somebody says no, the, there is imprisonment. But nobody says no. And we, uh, very voluntarily, they, they don't say no. And uh, we, by incidentally, we are probably the only country, of one of the few, where who use only the, the civil servant, the government servant, as the election staff, no non-government servant. And our logic is that a government servant is a permanent, and uh, we have him literally by the neck for 30 years. If somebody misbehaves, we start action against him, and there is no escape. So we are able to control uh, these people uh, better than we would be able to control their volunteers. After all, if they misbehave, what can we do? Then we have, uh, well, registered parties, 1,000, sorry, it is uh, three weeks ago, now there are 1,200. And, <laughs> and that was the figure in the morning, so I'll have to uh, update myself. We, in the parliament, we have uh, uh, the House of the People, we have 543 constituencies. Ladakh in Kashmir is the largest, uh, I can't even figure out how many square kilometers that makes it. Uh, then we have the smallest constituency in Lakshadweep Island. And uh, we have state assemblies, about 4,100 state assembly constituencies. And uh, we have been uh, uh, using uh, the electronic voting machine since 19... It was introduced in 82 on a pilot basis. It went into litigation. 98 onward, we have been using it. And it led to saving of 8,500 metric tons of paper ever since we introduced the machine, besides lots of other benefits. Now, how large? We have more uh, voters than all 50 countries of Europe and Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and Japan put together. We still have a gap of 50 million if we would volunteer some more countries in there. Uh, we have more voters than 54 countries of Africa put together. And North and South America, uh, uh, 56 countries put together. An entire commonwealth put together. That's the size of uh, India's uh, electors. This is the same thing, graphically. But uh, let me tell you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's not a question of size alone. We have these numbers. But it is uh, the complexity, the enormity, the diversity, and attention to detail how we have a polling booth only with one voter. There were two till last year. But there was one in Kerala uh, where this man normally would come after lunch at 2 o'clock. But legally we are supposed to set up a booth at 7 o'clock in the morning in case he chooses to come. And even after he had cast his vote we cannot close the shop because uh, he uh, suppose somebody else turns up and says Sir, he is not the person, I was a real voter. So there is a disputed vote there. So the shop has to be open till 5 o'clock. Unfortunately, last year he died. And there was a news item which says uh, death of a polling booth. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we still have the tradition going. Is there is a, a single voter in the Gir forest of uh, Gujarat. He is a temple priest. And there was one uh, daring uh, journalist uh, went to uh, talk to him and in Hindustan Times, it was a very interesting report, where he complained that no political party or candidate comes to him seeking his vote. <laughs> 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 but our party of, uh, the only concession we make here, instead of sending a polling party of five, which is our standard configuration, we manage with three. And uh, we do not uh, send paramilitary force, of course, also to, uh, to, to take care of the booth security. This is the only concession. Uh, because he refuses to go and we will uh, not uh, force him to go and we have to provide for him. We use, of course, because of the diversity, all kinds of transport, anything, you name it, and we use that. Elephants, cam camels, boats, bicycles, helicopters, trains. And when everything else fails, people walk. You know, literally, they are on the, uh, in Arunachal Pradesh and China border and many hill areas, there is no other way except to walk for three days and three nights carrying your kit uh, on your shoulder. But uh, it happens and there is no question of we not reaching them. Then we have, uh, we keep on devising new things and vulnerability mapping is a new device which we have adopted. Every single booth's uh, vulnerability to any uh, trouble of any kind is identified beforehand. For instance, in the general election, uh, we identified about 350 people who could possibly make uh, mischief. 
So we took a uh, preventive action under our criminal procedure code. In the state of Bihar, just one state of Bihar election recently, we uh, did preventive arrests of 66,000 people. Otherwise, they are the guys who can do booth capturing. Ten years ago, in the same state of Bihar, uh, around the poll time, there were 88 poll-related murders. This time, not the slightest of a scuffle. And uh, it has been regarded as a quite a historic election. Totally peaceful, the most peaceful, not just in Bihar, but in the country. Then, uh, in tracking information from every polling station, uh, we uh, have ensured that some communication or the other is available for, uh, from everywhere, so that within 10 minutes we will get to know uh, if anything uh, happens, which we must know. Suppose the booth is captured or the machine goes out of order, and half, within half an hour the, uh, the EVM, electronic voting machine, has to be replaced. We are a creation of the Constitution. The Election Commission is a constitutional authority. And we are uh, three members. The senior most is the CEC, uh, become the chief, uh, not uh, by, by law, but by convention. Uh, it used to be a single member commission till uh, 93. Uh, but uh, at that time, uh, the person uh, who was uh, the chief election commissioner became so powerful uh, and dictatorial that even the Supreme Court had to intervene. That is the time they made it, they made it uh, multi-member. And I think it is working beautifully because three brains uh, definitely contribute to good decision making. Their voting age was reduced to 18 years uh, by Rajiv Gandhi in 1989. But somehow a youth are anti-establishment. Uh, after that, uh, he lost the election. Uh, <laughs> so some, uh, in any case, uh, we are uh, trying to get youth uh, on board. Their interest in election is still very low. Their enrollment on electoral rolls is just about 20 to 25 percent. But we have come up with a very revolutionary uh, thing, as uh, maybe I'll mention to you later. Uh, we, uh, in the, for this huge exercise where we, 11 million people who work under us, they come on deputation to us and they are subject to discipline, posting, transfer, suspension by us. But to manage all that on a permanent basis, we are just 300 people in this, uh, in Delhi and about 300 in 35 states put together, 600. But for the election, we uh, take people on board. We, the, as I mentioned, we are always uh, uh, improving. Uh, photo electoral roll is an innovation we started about four years ago. On the electoral roll, uh, earlier we, identification of the right person used to be the issue. There were cases of impersonation. Then photo uh, identity card was introduced in the 90s. Already about 90% uh, of Indians have got photo identity card. But we thought, uh, Till the last person has an identity card, we cannot insist that you bring your voter card. Uh, you may have lost it or you may have not got it. All. So we used to allow 13, 14 other alternative documents like passport or driving license, both documents which are authentic. Uh, but uh, after introduction of this photo on the electoral roll itself, we would we feel that those identifications uh, will become almost irrelevant. You, they will just allow entry to the polling booth. After that, the, you have picture on the roll will take care. We have also introduced the system of booth level officer. Every booth level uh, ha has a person, normally a teacher, school teacher, or a lower government functionary who lives in the vicinity. You know him, he knows you. You can go check whether your name is on the roll or not. If not, uh, give the form and so on. So uh, this is also a uh, three, four year old innovation. Uh, we hear complaints from all political parties uh, all the time and com uh, complain by the political parties and complain against the political party. And we try and uh, our level playing field being a neutral, fair empire is our role, uh, which is what has given us credibility because we have really uh, been very fair in our dealing with everyone and suggestions are coming in all the time. Now, scheduling the election, people, uh, we, incidentally, election, it is the Election Commission of India which decides the dates of the election. Unlike Britain, where a prime minister announces the date, 
No way. In fact, in India, Prime Minister perhaps will be the last man to know what will what is the day. Why? And there is again a wisdom in it. Because uh, by timing the election in a, in a, at the time of your choosing, you are actually uh, uh, using a, uh, misusing an authority. So, so that there is a, a fairness for everybody. We, the decision is uh, left to us. Six months before the last date of the uh, parliament, uh, we, uh, we, have, we have the option to uh, do the election any time in those six months. Or suppose the parliament is dissolved suddenly, then six months after that, we have the flexibility. So, but of course, we have all this flexibility and all the power. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to assure you that we use very, very judicially because we know even if uh, we have unlimited power, they, but the power of the people, perception, they are extremely important. If I do anything uh, uh, undesirable, it will take minutes for people to realize that something is amiss uh, somewhere. So we try and be judicious in our discretionary powers also. We see the weather conditions, the law and order situation of that state. Uh, uh, we also engage central paramilitary forces to maintain the law and order, particularly very difficult areas, you know that about one third of the country has left-wing uh, extremism. The Maoists, you must have heard of the Maoists, they are very, uh, they are playing a very dangerous game. You know, they, there are roads which are landmined, uh, they uh, keep indulging in the ambushes, security forces are targets of attack. And in the last general election, uh, about 130,000 booths were in uh, these Maoist areas. Normally, the uh, struggle of the Maoists uh, with the security forces goes on all the time and they use surprise as a weapon. But in our case, even surprise uh, is not available because the date of the poll is known, timing of the poll is known, the return the uh, time the poll closes at 5, five o'clock, the uh, party starts moving. They are virtually sitting ducks. We, of course, we provide for security and also we pray and so far our prayers have been answered. Uh, then uh, agricultural cycle, we try to avoid the harvest season because that is the time of the sowing season. Farmers don't want to come out. We, there are so many festivals, since we have so many religions, we have so many festivals, religious festivals, cultural festivals, uh, also national state festivals, examination schedules. The month of March, for instance, is virtual holy cow. We, uh, all, our polling stations are all in the schools. Most of our staff is teachers, so we cannot disturb. So March is always ruled out, um, then uh, public holidays, etc., etc. Uh, we uh, call upon anybody to do duty for us. <laughs> then, of course, training these 11 million people is uh, also at different, different levels. Everyone, because there is no, not a question of a 50% success rate or 70% success rate. Every booth is independent and every booth has to uh, deliver a first class election. So it has to be 100% uh, success, therefore everyone has to have uh, hands-on training. Then uh, we did all diff different kinds of training and of course we make sure that uh, people tainted or who are close, uh, suspected of uh, uh, being very close to a political party. In, uh, in fact, we have uh, uh, we changed the chief secretary of a state, the director general of police of a state, home secretary at the drop of a hat only on the basis of a complaint of perception that the person is uh, uh, working very closely with the political party. That power, which came not so much from the Constitution but uh, from a Supreme Court judgment, actually has really uh, given us uh, something which uh, the officers down the line fear. Otherwise, getting them to act fairly would have been impossible. Procurement of EVMs, we have to make sure that they're all functioning, they have to undergo a uh, technical check. And now since there was some controversy about the uh, EVM, whether they can be tampered with, so we have uh, made sure that when these machines are tested before the poll, political parties are also invited to be physically present so that they can see how the machines are being checked and uh, they are being certified. Vulnerability mapping, I've already mentioned. We use uh, videographers, we use digital cameras, and uh, uh, <coughs> potentially vulnerable villages, persons, everything. Then, of course, we make security arrangements, uh, including confidence building measures. For instance, we have uh, 
uh, five states going to poll next month, and uh, one of uh, which has a lot of trouble, of including the Maoist kind. So we have already sent about 100 companies of paramilitary force, 100 companies, 100, uh, every company has 100 people, to just do flag marches through the streets for confidence building of the people. Once they know the security has arrived, they, they feel comfortable. Uh, communication for election tracking, I have already mentioned that we, at various levels, every single booth, whether, whether they have landlines, so we identify two, three landlines, or two, three persons who have a mobile phone. If that doesn't work, because there are shadow areas and dense forests, police wireless, even wireless cannot function in some, uh, some of these areas, then uh, satellite phones, and where everything else fails. The person who will walk, we identify runners, young, able bodied people to, uh, in their 20s who will run two, three kilometers to the nearest landline or the nearest communication point, inform us if some, the, something has happened which requires our attention. It has, apart from a smooth conduct of elections, it has also proved to be a great deterrent uh, against potential troublemakers. They, they know that these guys will get to know within 10 minutes and uh, help will uh, arrive and then they will be in trouble. And of course, we are using all kinds of technology, SMS-based uh, information system, email, uh, the, uh, call centers, all that. We, our approach is very clear that uh, for voting process itself, our voting machine uh, is a very simple 17th century calculator technology, which only is like an adding machine. You press a button, one vote gets captured, another button, another is added. Deliver. Although I dare say that we are a virtual IT superpower, but consciously we use very low technology because we don't want the machine to be networked because they can be hacked. We don't want another wiki leak, and uh, they, they do not use an operating system because an operating system on your laptop, even a child can make a computer game. You vote for X, the vote will go to Y. No way. For every other thing, we use high tech, but the voting process is very very simple. We appoint observers. These are independent observers, senior uh, officers of the same service, uh, uh, IAS officers, uh, who are sent to other states other than the one from which the, uh, in which they are serving or to which they belong, so that their neutrality is uh, uh, never questioned. And in the, the large general election, about 2,000, which is 40% of our uh, IAS cadre of the country, was deployed as observers. Voters love uh, these observers. They are virtual demigods because once we are there, they are our eyes and ears, and for them, they are uh, the symbol of neutrality. Any complaint, they go to the observer whose mobile phone is circulated, printed in the newspapers. He has to uh, pick up the phone. If, uh, sometimes we uh, do a test check. At 2 o'clock in the morning, we call up observer, and if he doesn't pick up, he's in trouble because he, we want him to be totally uh, available to hear complaint. EVM, we, we call it the wonder machine of Indian democracy. The model code. The, I referred to, to it earlier that this is a, a great instrument of uh, uh, quality election that we conduct, which uh, lays down minimum standards of behavior, how uh, they will conduct public meeting. No public meeting can go beyond 10 p.m. because it will disturb people. There have been prosecution at 10 past 1 because opposition is always alert. They, the moment the, the time is over, they will start complaining. And very senior leaders have got into trouble for exceeding this limit, so they're very scared. Then uh, the, the processions uh, which they take out, it should not become a nuisance for the public. How many cars can be there at uh, one time, then how much they have to leave so that uh, traffic can still flow. Then uh, they are con conduct on, on the day of poll and so on. Then checks of, of, uh, on a party in power. They cannot take a tour. Even a chief minister cannot go on an official tour. Even if, for that matter, the prime minister cannot go on an official tour and do, still do campaigning. If he is going for campaigning, he has to go only for that. And if uh, we uh, find uh, any leader using a uh, uh, government transport uh, or uh, transport to government expense, he will be in trouble. And there was this case uh, where um, Himachal Pradesh, anyone from Himachal Pradesh? 
when we uh, announced the elections in Himachal Pradesh and the Chief Minister who happened to be in Washington, instead of knowing that the, the, the election is pending, we announced the election and all the populist uh, schemes which he had in his pocket, which he wanted to announce very close to the election, he got preempted from doing so. He was very upset, angry, and uh, all kinds of political pressure came for uh, changing our decision, which of course there was no question of changing. He came with a half of his cabinet uh, using a state plane to meet us. Uh, and after that, not only did we reject his uh, request because it was unreasonable, we imposed a fine of uh, 2 million uh, rupees on him because he has used government transport. Recently, I met him and he said, I'm willing to forgive you for uh, not changing the election date, but the way you impose that fine. But that is uh, not uh, um, out of the way, actually, it was using uh, government transport for a political purpose. That's not allowed. So, but the, the, these things send a f uh, message down the line and uh, uh, with the result that only institution, uh, this is what we have heard from top politics, leader of opposition mentioned in a uh, public me uh, important uh, meeting last year in the presence of uh, prime minister and president that the only people, uh, politicians are scared of in India is the election commission because of our power to come down heavily. When we send a notice to a political party or a leader that uh, you have, there is a complaint, you violated such and such thing, please reply by within 24 hours by 5 p.m. tomorrow why action should not be taken. They're so scared that by 4 o'clock next day, the surely the reply will come. It does, that kind of compliance doesn't happen anywhere else. So this model code, but I would like to repeat that this is a creation of political parties themselves. We have, it is fashionable to paint them all black. Without a political party, there is no democracy. All of them are not uh, tainted. All of them are not uh, un, uh, undesirable. They, uh, they have set uh, good precedents also. Counting, of course, also is a, similarly a very huge process. Now, we still have uh, some issues of concern. It's not all hunky-dory. There are problems. One, of course, is the use of money power in election. There is a ceiling provided uh, by the election commission on uh, for parliament election and state election, but feeling is that 10 times, 50 times, 100 times more money is being used, which of course means that in black money, because it is unaccounted because they cannot, if they officially exceed the, the expenditure, their election will uh, be questioned and they will be unseated. So we have to deal with this. Uh, paid news is another major problem which has come up, that some newspapers strike deal with political parties and they uh, publish uh, news items which actually is uh, a sponsored. Uh, it's, it's an advertisement in the garb of a news. The audience is uh, misled, readers are misled. Or, uh, so uh, that is uh, another area of our concern. Then we have many people with criminal background, uh, with serious charges, even rape, kidnapping, murder, and they contest election. These were the guys who used to support candidates in the past, and then they realized that on the strength of uh, their uh, muscle power, if uh, others are winning elections, why don't they contest themselves? And about 20%, 25%, 30%, we have been, people don't realize that we have no control over that because disqualification of a person from contesting is decided by parliament, by an act. But people believe that the, that is where we are failing. And we, are, uh, we have been writing to the government to bring up a, an act. Political parties have two standard replies and proper, uh, with some uh, justification. One is that very often your rival candidate will file a false case against you, bogus cases against you. And on that basis, if you get disqualified, so it's a shortcut to uh, he defeating you uh, through the so, so valid point. Secondly, under uh, existing law, uh, everybody is innocent till convicted by a court of law. And unfortunately, conviction in India takes 20, 30 years. Meanwhile, a decoyer or a robber would have been a minister, would have been in whatever. And uh, even if the decision comes, so what do we do? So we came up with a formulation. Uh, and not just we, the, we may be an interested party with even the law commission jury, that at least those cases which will lead to, uh, which are heinous offenses, where conviction will be at least five years or more, or, and where the cases have been filed six months uh, before the election so that you have time to undo the damage, 
and where a court of law, which is independent, has framed the charges. Now, juries say that framing of the charges is without application of a judicial mind. Yeah, therefore, uh, without, uh, therefore, uh, on that basis alone, they cannot be disqualified. It's a genuine dilemma. But right now, this government uh, is serious about electoral reform. Seven regional uh, consultations were held recently. Second, third of April, there is a national consultation. All political parties will be there, and they will make their stand clear on this. Then we feel our dependence on central police force also is not a very sustainable thing. We are not happy to, uh, to do that. Why is it that people have no faith in the local police? So, uh, uh, by the way, same bureaucracy, which is considered inefficient, lazy, corrupt, or aligned to political party, once they come under the election commission, they deliver first-rate elections, which shows that they are basically competent. In fact, uh, our governor, Reserve Bank, Bimal Jala, made this comment after uh, the last general election. Look, same bureaucracy delivers a perfect uh, uh, event under uh, the command of the election commission. So we need to do something. Then urban apathy, we, we are trying to, uh, the suggestion come whether we should have compulsory voting. Is it nothing doing? It has to be voter education. And finally, you know, the losers always uh, look for excuses. The recent campaign is if somebody lost, oh, it must be the electronic voting machine. I was very popular. Hundreds of thousands of people used to come to my meetings. Why did I lose? Oh, it must be the electronic voting machine which played free. Criminals, money power, party fighting, or the, uh, we, uh, some of the suggestions which we now have that in the last 48 hours, uh, public meetings and rallies are bad, but door-to-door -door campaigning is allowed. We want that stopped also because in, in that one-to-one -one contact in 48 hours, the money can change hands. The liquor changes hands. So we feel that the 48 hours should be total quiet period where voter can then decide in the, uh, peacefully what he is going to do. We have uh, already banned exit polls during the election process. We also want opinion polls because they like paid news. These are paid sponsored polls. So you, you can uh, show anything which you want to hear. Uh, then we were already probably the people say that we are the strongest election commission in the world. But at the same time, every now and then, uh, my Indian friends will bear me out. We hear that the uh, election commission is a toothless tiger. They want more teeth given to us. Uh, I, well, so be it. Um, but we do feel that the, the complete equality of the three commissioners is important. Um, because they have an equal voting right. I can be outvoted ten times a day by the other two. So, uh, the, uh, under the pressure of the government, because government has to uh, appoint one of them as uh, the chief after I uh, go, uh, and the removal, uh, CEC cannot be removed except through impeachment. <coughs> about, the, about the other two, there is no such safety. We want that equality. And this, uh, some, uh, some other such. Voters education is uh, something which we are uh, banking on more and more. Uh, now, national voters, they are to end on this, that uh, we, uh, 25th January is our Founders' Day. We uh, decided that uh, uh, in a meeting of this kind in the uh, state of Odisha, somebody from the audience uh, got up and said that 18 years is an age to celebrate. Uh, it uh, made me think. And within a couple of days, we came up with a scheme which, uh, which is like this, that we started identifying those who will become 18 on 1st of January, that is the qualifying <coughs> day. On 5th of January, across the country, electoral rolls were notified. On 25th of January, 17 million voters got their photo identity card, which would normally have taken them months uh, or years. So this became, in the, and these uh, cards were given in 800,000 simultaneous functions across the country. In Delhi, it was chaired by the President of India where she gave a card to uh, b uh, voters in the booth in her uh, presidential estate, and 800,000 simultaneous uh, uh, functions, these guys got uh, uh, their card, which means the biggest youth empowerment program in one function. This means the biggest decentralized program of, uh, of any kind, and uh, it came so effortlessly that uh, the government of India has now declared the 25th January as National Voters' Day for all times.
we have also set up two new divisions. One is a voter education division. We realized that a lot more was desired on that side. And we have also set up expenditure monitoring. As I mentioned, money power is a serious issue. To deal with it, we needed uh, more teeth, more equipment. We set up a, a new division, uh, uh, income tax service officer is our director general there. An entire income tax machinery uh, was unleashed on the state of Bihar where we experimented and it worked wonders. On that basis, we have fine-tuned the, these guidelines and in the coming five states, we will uh, try these out once again. We, of course, we are uh, trying to use technology as much as we can in everything. And uh, this uh, is another thing. We are setting up in a, a training institute called Indian Institute of Democracy and Election Management. It was originally conceived as our own training institution, <coughs> but it has received so much of enthusiasm worldwide. In fact, one of the reasons why I came, uh, I spent three, four days in Washington. We had a meeting with the State Department. They want to have a partnership with us. But we made it clear that we keep distance uh, even from our own government. So uh, an alliance with uh, any government is out of the question. But there is a, this foundation called India International Foundation for Electoral Services, IFES. They are operating in 80 countries. We would like to have a partnership. We suggested to the US government that they can finance, say, uh, countries of Africa or uh, Central Asia or uh, Asia who uh, would like to send their trainees to this institute. And Commonwealth Secretary General, he came to meet us and he wants a partnership. UNDP is in touch with us, they want a partnership so that we are able to train uh, people in other countries also who would like to share our experience. And in fact, uh, the Secretary Clinton uh, spoke to our foreign minister uh, as uh, Egyptian uh, development took place, that uh, India may be required to play an important role there. And uh, the way things are, maybe not just Egypt, there are many more countries which may be going for elections. And we will be happy to share uh, whatever experience we have with anybody who may be interested. These are some of the... Uh, uh, the V. Mitchell, New York Times, is truly the greatest show on earth and owed to a diverse and democratic ethos and inspiration to all the world. These are some of the comments uh, uh, the last one, independent of London, India confirms its status as a democratic beacon, yet for this uh, chaotic na nation with its almost unfathomable religious, linguistic and social diversity, not only to hold free and fair elections, but also to deliver stable government is truly a remarkable achievement. In fact, it's a fact that uh, it's only in India, uh, in that part of the world, where the losing prime minister with folded hands offers the chair to the winner, no ill will uh, at all. Our vision is that there should, we should be able to have elections which are completely free of crime and abuse of money, based on a perfect electoral role and with the full voters' participation. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My second question was a little more on the NRI, voting on the NRI, and I'd like to understand more uh, from your perspective, how, what are some of the challenge you, challenges you see and where that is going to be? Can I take a few questions and then answer in a bulk, bunch sure. of four, five questions together? Do we? Or what is the practice that is doing? I think we're making it up as we go. Well, sure. what, what, you, what is your... Uh, I'm my relations. You have two questions. I think Straight up. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Uh, well, uh, unique identity is uh, uh, 
something which has just started where, where whereas we have been in business longer and um, but we are working very closely together in their governing body our uh, one of our officers is there so that we uh, work in tandem they uh, have introduced biometric system for uh, the card uh, one thing which people don't realize is that uid authority is not uh, producing any id card they will only generate a number and that number will be shared with anybody who has a card. For instance, we have a card, that we take that number and also superimpose. Uh, your driving license will also have that number. So they are not actually uh, any the ID issue in the authority. They just generate the number and we are working closely together. And the NRI voting, uh, there was a lot of debate on this. It's a very complex issue. I had a meeting with the ambassador in Washington. On way, I had a meeting with our ambassador or high commissioner in London. Uh, the uh, common problem with the mention that they don't know how many in, uh, Indians are there in America and how many uh, are there in the uh, UK, we, don't, we are not sure of the response. Second issue, which we, when we discussed it in, uh, in Delhi, uh, it, it may be alright in Washington when uh, we invite you to come and register and you turn up in 20,000 number. So imagine if 200 people come up outside uh, Riyadh embassy in uh, Saudi Arabia, they, they are not used to those kind of crowds. So there will be a big chaos. What we are doing is we have told our, uh, these, uh, our embassies that they should uh, notify it in as many, publicize in as many ways as they can to reach out to every person and right and uh, receive what we loosely call expression of interest so that at least we know what the problem is. Now, they, uh, the embassy feel that the, the system is, uh, will crash if thousands come up on, on Monday. As it is, they are dealing with passport application, the visa application takes time. So we are still trying to grow. Our uh, urgency is that uh, we have five states going to poll next month, and uh, some of them have lots of NRIs. And Kerala particularly was very keen that uh, we introduce it before this election. Uh, we really are keeping our fingers crossed how uh, we are going to do that. But legal position currently is that you can be enrolled now uh, in our uh, representation of people act, the provision is that you have to be ordinarily resident to be enrolled in a particular place. And we used to interpret it as six months. Since you are living uh, for more than six months outside uh, as a special dispensation, uh, it is allowed, except you can register in the place of your permanent home as mentioned on the passport. Uh, and also you have to be physically present to work. I'm not going into other things like how we will be the check of bribing of voters. Suppose there are uh, fake parties here or booze parties in Washington or uh, Pennsylvania to woo you so that you vote particularly. We don't allow such parties to happen in the country. So those are issues which we'll uh, grapple with much later. Right now we want to understand when it will stand. Do it. Do it. Thank you. Uh, I'm Louis Massicat from Canada. I have, mine is a rather focused question. Uh, your presentation reminded me of uh, an unusual original provision of the Indian Constitution that uh, I understand empowers the president to appoint uh, people uh, to the Lok Sabha and possibly to also to leg state legislative assemblies persons from what is described as the Anglo-Indian community. Now, a certain number of questions spring to my mind uh, on this. Uh, first, uh, how often this provision has been used? What is exactly the Anglo-Indian community? Have there been any problems arising from the coexistence within the legislatures of uh, mostly elected, but also a few of them appointed members? Yeah. The nominated members, uh, that uh, provision is still there. President can appoint up to 12 uh, nominated members who are distinguished people from uh, art, culture, science, who are not into politics at all, but who will enrich uh, parliament. And uh, of course, these nominations by the president are done by the government of the day, uh, President uh, Sain. I know Indian community was a special provision for India because there were lots of people, uh, there were inter-national uh, uh, marriages of, uh, where the, uh, the British married Indians, uh, either way, uh, husband uh, British and in, uh, wife Indian, vice versa. Um, 
and their children were called Anglo-Indian. And their number was very small, but the uh, constitutional framework thought that they must also have a voice. That, this problem is now uh, gone. I don't think there is even one uh, Anglo-Indian left now, because new generation has come. Uh, but uh, there used to be two Anglo-Indians were appointed in every uh, parliament. But uh, it has become now redundant. Uh, Dr. Qureshi, my name is uh, Satya Dosapati from Save Indian Democracy. You know me very well. <laughs> yeah, I, I know I caused aggravation to you and I hope uh, you, re you recognize that uh, it is only for the passion for the country and nothing good. And I have to tell, I've been interacting with Dr. Qureshi and I have nothing but praise how he conducted himself. And uh, I think the country is in good hands. I honestly believe that. I, and you know very well, I've been very closely working on this issue. I have a couple of questions for you. Um, one is the, the thing about the EVM issue, uh, the, where uh, there is a paper, paper bar printed. And I was wondering why that uh, paper printer is being discarded. Uh, or, uh, because in US, after a lot of experimentation, they realized they need paper ballot, they also need efficiency. And they went to the paper ballot to the optical scanner system. Now, and in India is using, trying to get its own version of that uh, version where you are having a machine plus a paper receipt, which is good sign. Now, I was wondering why you are discarding that. That is question number one. And the second number of, uh, question is, there is a uh, presentation that is going around in the last three weeks, it had 100,000 hits. And uh, this presentation is talking about plunder of India, the, the corruption, which is uh, estimated anywhere from one to $1.4 trillion. And uh, as you pointed out in your presentation, how the money is used, how do we control it? And even if somebody is elected, somebody can pay a $10 million. We have seen in 2008, there are allegations that the government was bought with $10 million for seat. How are we, how can we safeguard the democracy in the in these threats? Uh, let me introduce Mr. Satyapati to you. Uh, I met him for the first time, but I have received lots of hate mail from him. <laughs> <laughs> and this was in the context of the controversy about the electronic voting machine. Uh, uh, he, the, what is the name of the organization? Save Indian Democracy. Save Indian Democracy. So we for, uh, thought he is a competitor because we, I, we thought we were uh, the people who were in charge of serving Indian democracy, but we had a bad idea. But uh, they, they were questioning that uh, they have an electronic voting machine can be tampered with, uh, and therefore they want a paper trail. Uh, the, the, Mr. Dostapati, uh, uh, I would like to mention that actually even on an existing machine, a paper trail is possible. But we uh, use it not on the polling day. We use it before polling to see that uh, to see whether the machine is in order, or we use it on the order of a court. There was one case in the Kerala High Court uh, in the election petition where somebody said that 19 uh, voters were actually dead, but they had voted. So the court called us and asked uh, to, uh, to know whether we it is able to identify those votes. You know, secrecy of uh, the ballot paper is paramount. We can, although uh, when you come to us, we write your name in the order you have come. And the machine can uh, actually t tell you if you are the fifth voter, the fifth vote had gone to whom. But after the results are declared, these machines are out of bounds even for us. Only the court can get them open. So on the court order, we open the machine. We use that paper trail. There is a special decoder that we use and it was able to tell us the sequence. And we identified those 19 voters. Sure enough, they were bogus voters. Then the court said, can you, uh, all right, the, these uh, 19 votes are cancelled, the rest of the result is fine, so whatever the, that result was, was it now. So, um, we have absolutely no problem with that. Even the, you will uh, agree that uh, those people who are questioning the EVM, they didn't say that uh, our machines have been tampered with, or the results actually have uh, been interfered with. They only feel that there is no transparency in the sense that when you press a button, the vote is going into some electronic component, you can't see it going. So whether uh, there can be some uh, visible uh, proof that it is going to the place where you wanted it to go. 
That's why they suggested print that uh, the uh, water verifiable paper trail, VVPT, uh, is what they. Um, we the, try to argue uh, uh, with these people that our machine is absolutely reliable because beside the technology and its simplicity was in the, was in the secret of sector, there are 14 seals on that machine and each seal is signed by the candidates and other agents. So, for instance, the machine were finally, at the same time after this controversy, we introduced certain more measures. For instance, our first level check of a machine before uh, we use deployed in the election, used to be done by our engineers and we will get their certificate. Now we made it clear after uh, you people raised uh, this issue that our first level check will also be attended by political parties. Uh, where they will do mock poll using this uh, printer also. They, they, they used to question our mock poll also that uh, you know already this uh, uh, chip can be devised in such a way that when you do a mock poll, the first 50, 60 votes will go fine but it will start malfunctioning uh, later on. Every the, uh, polling station, one million, everywhere uh, before the poll, we have a one hour of mock poll. Where you do, you can poll 100, uh, 10, 50, 20, 100 votes, see the results. If it tallies, the candidate certify, yes, we saw the mock poll, it was machine was working fine. Then the uh, presiding officer presses the button clear and reset, and the, uh, the machine is start. Now we all started putting a paper seal over the machine also. We gave it to some of these people who were questioning, okay, here is the machine, that is how it will be in the polling station, tamper with it. You are talking of hacking, okay, hack the machine, show. Sure. Now hacking requires uh, uh, working from a distance, but this is a machine which is not, uh, is not network. Then the response was that we are not a magician. We are not a magician, when the machine is sealed, how will we tamper it? That's the point. But in any case, since uh, not only we have to be fair, we have to appear to be fair, mm -hmm. we called a meeting of all political parties, each one of them, and they, uh, since they had heard about uh, uh, the, this controversy, uh, they suggested that we, we try this uh, paper trail and refer it to a technical committee of independent experts. There used to be three members, by the way, since you know the detail more than anybody else, so we have now made it five. One criticism against your teacher, uh, Mr. In the sense that he is old fashioned, old timer. That's why we have in, uh, in, uh, included two young members also from the latest of computer uh, technologies, so that all kinds of experience is available. The on the recommendation of all political parties, we have referred it to this independent committee of experts. They have called all the critics of the machine and all the political parties to give their suggestion, and uh, we have asked the two companies to start manufacturing that machine and see how it works. Now, uh, don't uh, start another uh, email campaign against me, but I'm just trying to explain. You know why? Our reservation is, uh, Mr. Dosokati, that uh, if, if the, so anybody who has an engineering background will know that uh, electronic devices are uh, uh, less vulnerable to corruption or getting out of order than a mechanical device. To give one example, your calculator for the last five years has never malfunctioned, but your computer printer must have jammed three times yesterday. What will happen is, in the last general election, 1.2 million machines were used. There were 4,000 machines with malfunction for some reason or the other. And these are minor, a wrong button press or something, the battery was loose or something or the other, we will replace those machines. But these 4,000 were disruptions of the whole process. And they have very serious implications, law and order implications. When we introduce a printer, and if there are 40,000 uh, disruptions of the whole process, and not 140,000 disruptions of the whole process, so God save us. We are very worried about that. But we are very open to that. That technology, as I said, was already available on our machine. They are developing uh, some printer, which will withstand. And secondly, as I mentioned, were you there from the beginning of this lecture? Not very beginning, I admit. There. So, yeah, the very first point. We have uh, the temperature of minus 40 degrees and we have temperatures of 56 Celsius and these machines function perfectly everywhere. But the printer may, may perhaps not. It has a, a mechanical device. So let's see how it works. But we are working on it very sincerely and what we appreciate your sentiment was perfectly fine which is why as soon as um, the, the ball came in my court, uh, we took this decision. Uh, who is uh, more concerned about the uh, fairness of the process than an institution which has been entrusted with the staff? Right?
So be assured we have, we have given it and if you have any other input, same people. Um, by the way, you, I don't know how many of you have read that they landed, the, from, one came from USA, an assistant professor from Michigan University, one from Netherlands, they were stopped at the airport, were not allowed to enter. And immediately the controversy started that because they were voting, uh, uh, opposing EVM, the fact was just the other way. We came to their rescue, I had landed from somewhere at 11.30 in the night and I got this message that the, the gentleman is stopped at the airport. I used my good offices because we do have uh, friends everywhere to let them come in because we didn't want the, this to be linked up with, uh, with the EVM. They were stopped by the airport for violation of visa. They came on a tourist visa and had, had, had attended press and uh, had attended conferences. So violation of visa, you talk of law of the land. Everywhere, even the, the, the uh, ambassador is frisked uh, every now and then because law of the land, law of the land needs to be respected. But on, on our intervention, those two gentlemen and Hari Prasad, by, by the way, came to thank me personally for letting them come in and we have no, no evil against them. Except when I asked Hari Prasad, okay, look, we are doing all that. Will you guarantee that all this procedure which we are doing in consultation with you, after that no other Hari Prasad will get to stand up and say okay, that, that this is the uh, wrong thing? He says, no, I can't guarantee. The new system is foolproof. There is, there is no guarantee that exactly uh, what are we going, uh, going to. Going back to ballot paper will uh, be something where it will be unfortunate if, if it has to happen someday. But if it does, so let it, so, so be it. We will not scared of that, right? That's it. You mentioned um, how well, well, you, you convinced all of us, I mean, how well the process works. And, uh, the question that I had in mind has to do with the Maoist uh, areas. And it seemed from your remarks that a very large number of polling booths now are affected uh, by the Maoists. Um, what does that tell you about the strength of the democratic process uh, in India? Um, how uh, effective can the election commission be with, with all of its efforts in areas where people are intimidated uh, and told not to vote, and how serious would you say that problem is now? Yeah. You know, the uh, Mao's problem uh, has its uh, roots in uh, economic uh, deprivation, but we, we will have nothing to do with that. Our only concern is that nobody should be intimidated. The uh, routinely, the Mao's uh, 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 issue a boycott call, and uh, the standard uh, thread is that the first voter, the finger will be uh, chopped off. So nobody would like to be the first voter. There is no way we can bring in the second voter first. So, <laughs> but you know, at the end of the day, we take all of our precautions. We try to uh, give security. And uh, at the end of the day, polls uh, uh, take place. Sometimes uh, when we uh, get complaints that the poll was not genuine, the polling party went uh, uh, stop short half a kilometer under a tree. They did all the process and came back. We ordered a report. Uh, it happened in Chhattisgarh last time. And sometime, and even then we, uh, we were uh, we were suspicious that they, they had not, it was not a fair poll. It was just uh, manufactured. So we ordered a report of the report. Till we were satisfied that it was correct. Our uh, position, in the government of India's position, is that we well, we have elections. If you want to capture power, you cut this election and become the chief minister, become the prime minister. In fact, Punjab chief minister, I was mentioning you only yesterday, current Punjab chief minister, in uh, 10 years ago, in the guise of a truck driver, he was uh, the, uh, uh, running around uh, because he was uh, wanted in criminal cases. Now, they came back into the electoral fold, they contested election, they are now very powerful government and living in uh, reasonable comfort. So, um, I think this is the, the best process and that is the appeal to the Maoists. Come, a contest election, if you are popular, come. What probably has happened is that uh, there is only a fraction of the 5% are ideologically uh, driven by uh, that philosophy. They are the, therefore the genuine guys. Uh, lots of thugs, lots of uh, uh, cheats and frauds, 
uh, have jumped onto the bandwagon and they are uh, extra, doing extortion. So they are trying to benefit from uh, their the kind of a situation. And the government of India is trying uh, in their strategy to uh, uh, wean such uh, elements away. In fact, unfortunately, one of the collectors, collector is the head of a district, most powerful, our biggest tool for a election process is our district election officer of a, in, in a place called Malkavi. He is uh, uh, captured by the mouse. Uh, till this morning, he had not been released. And yes. Malkangiri yes. was yes. released. Yes. Yeah, I'm so happy to hear that. Because Malkangiri was the place last year in the general election which gave us two days and uh, two sleepless nights because the polling parties get from there uh, because we keep tracking around the, the clock uh, their arrival back it took us two days to locate uh, the last few uh, polling parties from the Malkangiri forest this is one of the difficult areas so when there are uh, still negotiations go on, there are mediators and we hope that, that uh, the problem will somehow be controlled but Election holds the key, otherwise you see what is happening in the entire Middle East. If there, that is the only way for change of power, so people use that uh, method. Dr. Krejci, thanks very much for your interesting remarks. My name is Michael Scharf, I'm a researcher with Princeton University, and I work on elections management issues. And uh, Rish and I were just in India in November and December of this past year, uh, meeting with a number of your colleagues at the Election Commission. Um, my question is on the vulnerability mapping exercise, which was a new innovative solution for the 2009 general elections. And to a point that you made uh, in your presentation, I'm curious, uh, you used the term preventive measures. Um, I guess the first part of my question is, if you could characterize what those preventive measures look like, uh, and then second, um, if you could perhaps talk a little bit, a little bit about uh, the legal aspect of those preventive measures, uh, where you draw the, the basis uh, for taking the actions that you do. Thank you. Yeah, yeah vulnerability uh, mapping, as I explained to you, that we used to get complaints uh, that some particular uh, sections of population are not allowed to come out and vote. They were intimidated, they were threatened. They used to be a, what they call informal curfew. Uh, if uh, you are seen outside your house, you will break your legs, you know, that kind. So they were they used to be scared. So we started identifying such uh, booths. What kind of threat is it? Communal threat, caste threat, is it money threat? All so that we know exactly who are the troublemakers. Uh, preventive measures are entirely legal under our criminal procedure code. A vagabond and uh, mischievous characters who can uh, create a public disorder, they uh, can be chalant. Uh, they can be um, uh, proce uh, proceeded again, and the, the term used is bound down. That somebody uh, you have been found loitering around, and we feel uh, your uh, intentions are bad, and we for, uh, we order you. A magistrate has to order that for the next six months, one year, you will behave, and if you don't, you have to give us some kind of a security, which will get uh, forfeited. So the preventive measure that we took was uh, that we identified these people, we went through legal process, gave them notices, magistrates uh, gave, gave them notices, and then bound them down for good behavior and good conduct. And if uh, for violation thereof, penalty would have been uh, security uh, for future. Uh, and other preventive measures were even preventive arrests. On, the, on the, this apprehension, they can be arrested. And about six, as I mentioned, 66,000 people in Bihar were, were arrested. They are troublemakers with known history. And they uh, entire, uh, their entries and are known in every police, police, police station. Identifying them and then under our normal criminal procedure code, they, uh, this, this action was taken to make sure that they do not uh, create trouble on the day of the day. <coughs> if any more, I will answer later. And just say I have a flurry of hands, and I've got eight minutes to the hour. Do we have any questions in the session? Do we need to? Okay. Okay, so we'll take them one at a time, but make it quick. Alistair McMillan from the University of Sheffield. Um, you mentioned delimitation, and I know that the Election Commission doesn't have direct responsibility for the delimitation process, um, which is the apportionment of seats, 
between um, constituencies, but also across states as population changes. Now, the initial provision of the Constitution was that happened every 10 years after the census, but it hasn't happened across states since the 1970s. And so I wanted to ask Dr. Qureshi if he thought that the Election Commission should have responsibility for the uh, delimitation process, and secondly, if he thought that the principle of one person, one vote, one value needed to be reasserted in India. <coughs> Uh, delimitation, of course, uh, is done uh, by an independent commission, which is uh, headed by a retired judge of the Supreme Court. Uh, and secondly, this information that after 71 delimitation has not taken place is uh, out of date, this information. The, the commission uh, uh, did delimitation only two years ago. Uh, except, yes, except, except three, four states where there was some kind of a political trouble or resistance <coughs> to delimitation. Um, that will uh, take, that decision will be taken again by Parliament, and uh, uh, whenever that happens, uh, it will happen. In the delimitation process, the Election Commission is otherwise closely involved. The entire secretary they, they is housed in the, in the Election Commission. The staff is provided by us. One of us is a, uh, is a member of the uh, uh, the delimitation commission. Thirdly. For the, the general delimitation across the country, the, there is an independent commission. But for um, uh, uh, upper house of, uh, and we have seven states which have upper house, that delimitation is done by Aswanya. For instance, in Tamil Nadu, recently we did in Andhra. In Tamil Nadu, we, uh, we recently did our delimitation. That power is already given to us. And I think it is better, that it's a very, uh, uh, it's a process, um, again, which requires a lot of uh, public faith and credibility. Uh, the system of uh, judicial, uh, a judge uh, chairing it is, is a good idea, except that, uh, as visualized, it should happen every 10 years. Right now, for instance, in Jammu and Kashmir, there is a demand. But then, uh, it, it has been frozen for about 30 years, and Jammu people feel that if there is delimitation, they will uh, end up getting more seats. The, uh, probably they have a point. But that is a call which is not with us and uh, the government has to take a decision on that. Yes. Hi, uh, thank you for your comments. Milan Vaishnav from Columbia University. Uh, I just wanted to follow up on, on two things, the money, power, and criminality, uh, and get your, your thoughts on, on two aspects. One is it seems that you already have some tools that can be used to crack down on both of these things. You, you had mentioned that you, you team up with the income tax authorities and that's been widely reported in the press. Couldn't you, in theory, link up the, the assets that candidates declare with whether or not they pay taxes at all, and if so, what income they state on their income tax forms and make that information public to civil society and the scholars and so on? And the same could be done on the criminal side. I mean, of course, they have to declare whether or not the criminal case is proceeding against them, but the police authorities keep records of whether or not someone is a known hardened criminal and they have various classifications and that information would be tremendously empowering if it could be released and it seems that you already have the existing authorities to do that. Uh, could you, would you mind commenting yeah, on that? Yeah. Uh, as it is, uh, every candidate when he files his nomination, he has to give two affidavits to the returning officer. One of which is about uh, his financial background. Uh, assets, liabilities, uh, including of the family. The second affidavit is about the criminal antecedents. We, the returning officer, is in no position to decide whether the affidavit is false or uh, true, because he, his action is time bound. He has to decide before the end of the day, which is 3 p.m. So, all that he can do, he pastes these uh, affidavits on the notice board outside his court, and. He is uh, supposed to uh, put it up on the website of the district election officer and the CU. And in addition, what we do is we share these affidavits with the civil society organization. Uh, ADR is uh, the most famous association for democratic reform, which is uh, a creation of some professors of uh, Indian <coughs> Institute of Management, Namdabad, and Bangalore. And it has become such a movement that 1,200 civil society organizations together have come and they call themselves National Election Watch. They work very closely with us, our eyes and ears, just as uh, uh, Mr. Dosapati is, because all the, anybody who is concerned about the uh, democratic process is our ally. 
So we share this information with them. They do their own analysis. They go to the media and then show to the people. That's a man who was a pauper yesterday and uh, is now running in uh, millions. So how come he acquired that? And then they, they left to the people judgment to question uh, their representatives, how they acquired that kind of money. So we are working on the different fronts. But uh, there's an uh, income tax uh, machinery. Uh, we, to make their life difficult uh, for these people who to give a wrong affidavit, we also used to send these affidavits to income tax department, CBDT, to use this as a raw materials as information. And if uh, income tax returns had a different information from what they gave to us, so let the income tax authorities take care. But they were really not following up on those things. Now that we have started getting after the income tax machinery, virtually uh, we have requisitioned the entire income tax uh, department to work for us uh, in the election process. We sent expenditure observers who keep uh, eyeing every activity. They uh, go with the um, uh, video surveillance team. Like for instance, your public meeting will be video recorded by us. And when the candidate comes and he says, I use only $100 for this meeting, our man will show him his video and look, we uh, shot it and this would have uh, uh, used $20,000. So where is this gap? So uh, the, you can't run away from it, so immediately they start accounting for it. The kind of uh, surveillance that we have done on the spot is uh, working very well. We came across lots of innovative uh, frauds. For instance, um, how the expenditure ceiling was being violated. We, our observers, uh, one observer of, uh, saw one big uh, marriage party going on. What 4,000 people, lavish uh, spread there and liquor. And he just uh, somehow out of curiosity, he went in that uh, to see what was happening. He found there was no bridegroom and there was no bride. <laughs> it was not a marriage party. It was a bogus party only to entertain voters uh, by way of a bribe. Then we came across, it was a very standard practice only, we were sleeping. All, uh, most marriages take place during election period, most birthdays, and there is a moon and ceremony, you know, you have a new moon and NRI voters, the ceremony here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think my question is, you know, the Indian Congress has Dr. Kwashi, good evening. My name is Bridget Daniel, and I'm a 2011 Eisenhower Fellow. Thank you. So I'll be traveling to India later on this year for a couple, um, about two months. Um, my question is, I'm going to study technologies and how they can affect low-income populations here in Philadelphia, et cetera. So I wanted to ask you how the use of technology has maybe spawned. I know that you mentioned in your presentation trying to empower youth and get used to to more uh, actively vote and how maybe how are using technology in that and maybe how we're trying to do that with minority communities and low-income communities here, offer and share some suggestions to mobilize our, our populations here in the United States, particularly in Philadelphia. Yes. As I mentioned, we used uh, technology of every conceivable kind for everything except the voting process, where we okay. very simple. Uh, we are using GIS. We are using GPS, for instance, the polling party which I mentioned, where we have to track them on a, uh, till they reach safety. So we uh, monitor them. So, um, the, uh, satellite images, uh, all, all that. In fact, just before I came, we, uh, we took a presentation, and uh, in particularly sensitive areas of you know, West Bengal or Assam, we are uh, doing this exercise. So, um, and then we also have started from this year. Uh, national data bank of voters so that we can also identify uh, duplicate voters and also it will facilitate movement of one uh, or migration if somebody goes from one city to the other uh, the, your number your the, uh, vote will still be valid only you have to make a choice In, instead of your old place you can register in the new place we uh, are to get to know these new practices uh, in the Dhaman Jubilee year, uh, well, last year, we asked young officers, uh, the collectors of the district, to uh, make their presentation on anything innovative which they had done. Mm -hmm. And the best practices were also given a, a national award by the president. And any uh, interesting thing we come, uh, come across, for instance, in a remote uh, village of uh, Arunachal Pradesh and China border, mm -hmm. one young lady collector introduced webcasting from the polling station. That's the first time we heard the word webcasting. Mm -hmm. It worked so well. Sitting in Delhi, we were eight, ten polling stations. We knew exactly what was happening. 
in one case we saw a uh, police constable in his uniform entering the um, polling booth, which is not allowed. Immediately we, we, uh, we called up to find out it was an innocent, uh, silly mistake. There was no bad intention. But now this is how any technology, any bright idea, and if you have some more, uh, now or after your tour, please share with us because we do want to uh, use high tech uh, as much as possible. Um, so long as my friend is uh, fully convinced about it. <laughs> well, on that note, we've overstayed our welcome. I sense I have is that uh, this is probably before a coffee break for the day's work that, that Commissioner Gretchen was in. Uh, will you join me in thanking him for uh, putting incredible?